This is Marian Patterson's story of her life during World War II, narrated by her two granddaughters, Sky Wanamaker and Arlene Guzik. Our aim is to tell Marian's story, not just about her bravery, but also how she would have wanted to tell about how others' lives were affected by the events of World War II. Throughout her memoirs, her messages were, we adapt to survive and we help as much as we can. Marion was born on August 26, 1911 in Aberdeen, Scotland. At the early age of eight, she moved to Canada with her family where she grew up and attended school. On August 16, 1930, in Toronto, she married Guthrie Armour Patterson, originally from Dundee, Scotland. Guthrie was born January 29, 1902. On October 8, 1932, their son Douglas was born in Toronto, Canada. Guthrie served in the Royal Air Force from October 1939 until his release as a sergeant, Class A, on October 23, 1945. His units included AACU, Anti-Aircraft Cooperation Unit in Hatfield, Hertfordshire, UK, and RAF Lindham. This is Marion's story of returning to Aberdeen, along with her husband, Guthrie, and young son, Douglas. In August of 1939, we arrived in Scotland, but in September, war broke out. And shortly thereafter, my husband Guthrie joined the Royal Air Force on October 26, 1939. The news of the war sounded serious, and we were of two minds. Should we return immediately to Toronto or remain in Britain? When Pat joined up, that settled it. I had started to call my husband Pat for short. Pat was away all the time, and my son Douglas and I enjoyed staying with my aunt Annie Rothney, who had again remarried. I now had a new uncle, William Bremner, whom we called Bill. Their home address was 6 Jackson Terrace, Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire. It was very difficult being separated from Pat with Douglas in school all day. I was bored around the house with nothing to do. So I decided to do something instead of sitting around. My aunt was an excellent housekeeper and cook, and there was not enough for two women to do in the house. I then enlisted as an ambulance driver and started in right the next day. I was stationed not too far from where we lived and I was very pleased with myself. I acquired a car and gave it as a sitting case car. This way I was able to get in a few petrol coupons so I could use my car occasionally when required as all petrol was under ration. I really enjoyed my job and attended classes when I was not on duty to come more proficient in my work. I joined the Order of Eastern Star and soon my aunt and I became life members. I belonged to the White Shrine and was queen in this order for two years. I also became prelate in the Order of the Amaranth for a number of years. These orders were all devoted to doing good. There were many social functions, and I loved dressing formal for these occasions, as it helped us to forget that the war was going on around us. As ambulance drivers, there was a ruling that we kept our ambulance or sitting case car clean and our first aid equipment in first class order. But because of the shortage of petrol, little starting of the motors was done. The officials, I am sure, never expected that we would ever have a raid. When we had a real disaster on our hands, cars and trucks from the street had to be commandeered to transport wounded to the hospitals and the dead to the morgue. On July 12, 1940, Hall Russell's shipyards on York Street in Fiddy received a direct hit and 38 men lost their lives that day. Apart from this, 
Civilians were machine gunned in the street. While the average person did not get too excited, it took a few days for the whole town to get over the shock. It happened at 1 p.m. in the daytime. Had this taken place at 12 o'clock, the workers would have been at home having lunch and many lives would have been saved. After this attack on the shipyards, we knew we were on the front line of attack. Aberdeen being an important shipping port, the Jerry wanted to disable it. From that moment on, we were ready around the clock to go on duty and motors were started every day.